Good evening. It is the evening of August 1st. So here we are doing the August shop tour. Um, the shop is relatively clean now, so I figured I'd do this before I unpack the contents of my work truck into it as we're going on vacation. So here we'll start off with the corner. This is the table that my planer, my old planer, used to rest on. I'm still in mentally and emo and uh, cognitively, I understand it needs to leave because it's taking up space. Emotionally, I can't bear to get rid of it because it's a small little horizontal table that I can stack things on. Right now, what you see on it are the, the pieces for the two funeral chairs I'm making. And that mug is a friend of mine's. I have to make turn that mug into a trophy. So that's some current projects just stacked up on there. I'm um, over in this corner, a box full of dust collection fittings and six inch duct and uh, some reducers and hose clamps and there's some rock or dust right stuff down in there. Those are all the f fiddlings and pieces left over from setting up the dust collector. Um, and there's a, my bandsaw accessories and stuff that has to go into the attic. That's what usually lives in that corner. Here's the bandsaw. Nothing's really changed there. It's solid at this point. Now that I've cut, I cut this all out to expose where the bearings hit the blade and now you can actually see and I put a link belt in it. Two big improvements make it a solid performer. It's now certainly better than my old saw. Um, here's the table. I finally took out these Rockler clamps. Um, I've had them for <laughs> I don't know how long, years, and I finally took them out and used them. Uh, thing is, though the, pl the face of the actual delta fence is perfectly perpendicular to the table. This face is not. It kicks out at the bottom. And I don't know if that's the MDF or the fact that they're putting more pressure at the top than they do at the bottom. I only had to make a couple cuts with it. I kind of made it work. I, I feathered out the top by putting blue tape along the top. Made it much better, but not still quite perpendicular. If I want really accurate, I'm going to have to look into that some more. Again, I don't know. Is it the MDF or is it the clamps or is it both? But I will say they were really easy to set up and use, so hopefully it's not the clamps. Um, here, I can't bear to throw this out because it's in German. You know, want to buy a house in Germany? Well, Steve Taylor did, so that's why I got that. Over here, you'll see a lot of changes and hopefully improvement. I've taken these drawer units, which were originally in that corner, and more recently in that corner and under here, and I moved them all over here. Now they're neat and stacked out of the way, couple things about where they are now is that it was easy and quick and out of the way. That's why they're there now. Um, I've removed them so many times, I don't know which one is where and what's in each drawer. So I think I need to open up all the drawers, empty them all, and repack them. And in the process of doing that, I'll probably eliminate about a third of the stuff that's in them because it's it's junk. So I need, to re I need to do a bit of reorganizing of what's in the drawers right now. And secondly, this location um, is not permanent because ultimately I think my router table is going to go there. But for now... That's where they are. Uh, here you've got these suitcase style stacks. Someday, I, ha I have actually all the drawer slides in the attic. Someday I have to make a rack where there are drawer slides. You can pull it out and open one and close it and remove it if you want to, but it's gonna be a plywood drawer that it rests on and goes in and out. Uh, I don't know where that's gonna go or what it's actually gonna be configured to do, but that mechanism is gonna be in whatever I ultimately make for them. Um, here's my sanders and festival rack. Not much has changed there. Got a garbage pail over in the corner. I've got my drill press over in the corner. I'm not willing to relegate the drill press back to the attic, but at this point, I don't quite have a home for it. I need to make some sort of a stand, ideally with storage, or absolutely with storage underneath it. I think maybe some of these red cabinets, maybe shelves for these things. I'm not 100% sure what's going to be under it for storage, but something for storage, and I want it to have as small a footprint as possible, but be just wide enough that it's stable, because that's going to be heavy at the top of it. Here on the bench, the bench most recently was right here down the middle. I kind of like that, but I got stuff on this wall. I got the planer still. I don't have the mobile base made for it, so it still doesn't push tight against the wall, so it's sticking out here. Um, the joiner, rather. Excuse me. And uh, I was just looking at Shannon's most recent shop video over at the Renaissance Woodworker, and he's got a much bigger bench than mine, dead set in the middle. And his shop is roughly the same size as mine, though I believe it's about three foot wider based on the measurements he gave in his video. Um, and he also has much less against the wall, so his bench in the middle with no big equipment around it works great. I really like the bench configuration in the middle, but uh, it's against the wall now, so I win this open space. It just emotionally feels like such a bigger space when this is empty. So here's the bench against the wall, and it's not quite against the wall. I've got, I've got space back there, and it's a little tilted so I can clear the end of the joiner. Um, it, it's not the 
ultimately I need to rebuild the bench, or sooner than later I need to rebuild the bench. So anyway, that's the bench. Here, you see test boards and samples and these little slithers I made. Um, I'm repairing this clock. In the video, the patch looks pretty good, though I'm not satisfied with it in my eye. You can't quite see, but here and here there are lines. So I have some more futzing to do to get this clock repaired, but it's getting there. It's been sitting in the shop for like six months. It's about time I got to it. Uh, as we come around here, summertime, the fan is hanging. I love that fan location. It's on these little wooden straps, and I just pop it up and put it back in the attic in the wintertime. It's got the window right there. It does a reasonable job of getting a nice breeze going through the shop. Um, the drills I don't have a home for right now, and the joiner I still need to make a mobile base for to tuck underneath that. And I'm dealing with a welder, a good friend of mine. Um, he's going to make the angled brackets I need. And he's waiting to get scrap that he can use so I don't have to pay for this steel. So that's what we're waiting on. It's going to take a little while, unfortunately. As we come back here, nothing to really report about the, uh, the miter saw. Though, with some rearranging, I've got my dust deputy back there. Years ago, I picked up a dust deputy. My dad picked one up at the same time. He never did anything with his. I actually built mine onto a 55-gallon drum and made this big rolling thing. And it worked great, but you see how big my shop is. It was foolhardy to put, a, you know, a, one of them, a dust deputy, on a 55-gallon drum. So I gave that one to my dad. It's got a much bigger shop, and I took his, and I haven't done anything with it yet. So I was thinking of making some sort of a, a tight-fitting, squarish bin underneath the dust deputy and have the dust deputy connected to this hose just specifically with the shop vac. And maybe connect this shop vac to it on a somewhat permanent basis. Maybe just buy a real cheap, small shop vac just to power just that. I'm not quite sure. What I don't like is the fact that this hose has to get set up around everything, and usually the dust, this uh, vacuum is somewhere else, and it's it's more work than I want. I want to leave it permanently set up. I haven't quite figured out what I'm doing yet. What I may actually end up doing is taking this one, because I have enough money invested in that thing, that, that Clearview Cyclone on the top is fantastic, but it was a couple hundred dollars uh, when I bought it many years ago, and I've gotten lots of use out of it. I really, again, I really like it. So I'm reluctant to get rid of it, but I'm trying, now that I've got the bigger dust collector you see in the corner, we'll get to that in a minute, I'm trying to minimize it, and I'm... I'm Sorry about that. Anyway, I'm uh, back to the dust collector. I'm very happy with it. I've gotten my more than my money's worth out of it, but with that big dust collector and the dust extractor, I'm trying to not have three essential vacs in the shop, so I'm going to try to get rid of that. I'm not 100% sure if I can. But that brings us to this dust collector, and you can see, we'll forget about the top for a second. Here I've got the dust right hose, that's from Rockler. Um, it, it reduces from six down to four because the dust right only comes in four. There's the dust right hose. It's the small one. I've got a small shop. Um, and it, the quick connect really works well. It fits on the joiner, over on the planer. I've got the fancy elbow underneath the table saw, and I've got one on the back of the bandsaw. And I've run all four tools with the machine connected. It's doing a fantastic job. And what this is is an older uh, Dust Boy dust collector. I'm not I'm not aware of them still making this style. This is a relatively new Dust Boy. I have a very old one still up in the attic. Um, but what I found running it, though you see, lighting's bad, but I haven't used it that much, but I do have plenty of chips in the bottom considering how much I've run through it. Um, I was still getting a lot of dust in the bag, because there's a bag that's supposed to connect to here, and originally it was going into a bag, and I don't know what the microns of the bag are, but my suspicion is it's probably a 30 micron bag, it's not a pleated filter, it's nothing fancy, um, it's a rather, you know, rudimentary early dust collector, so I, I don't think it's going to be a high micron bag, and I was very disappointed by how much uh, little chips of wood were in the bag. So. I actually was asking the guys at um, Shop Talk Live over at Fine Woodworking about the dust right hose, actually, and about using a 4-inch hose versus a 6-inch hose and air volume versus velocity. And in the course of that discussion, uh, I believe it was Mike Pekovic, but one of them mentioned, well, why not just exhaust it outside? And I said, you know what? That is a good idea. So I took this relatively cheap 6-inch flex hose, which was the hose that came with it when I got it off Craigslist, and that hose runs over to here. And at least for the summertime, this is fine. And I take this. This is a furnace adapter. 
and I've got a screw right there and it just hangs like that, it's a stainless steel screw and it blows out here into the garden and if I was milling, you know, hundreds of board feet, I suspect that would pro ultimately cause a problem with the garden I perhaps am naively optimistic that it will not and so far it hasn't that's my plan at least for the summer but that being said, come winter time when this, the R40 walls that I have are going to come in really handy. I don't want to be blowing all this air outside, especially since the way it's rigged up right now, I have to have the garage door open to do it. So, what I have ordered and what will be here when I get back from vacation is a super dust deputy. Uh, Todd Clippinger has a great video on it. He was ranting about it. And based on seeing how well it worked for him and how well the regular dust deputy works, uh, I'm naively optimistic, perhaps, but optimistic nonetheless, that it's going to do a good job. So, I have a smaller storage bin coming in, and the Super Dust Deputy, which is a 5 inch intake hose, so I'll have to rejigger the 4 inch dust right. Um, but I want to set up a, the Dust Deputy underneath this somehow. Um, typically, it's designed to, to connect via hose to the dust collector, and I think I, I don't think I want to do that. I think I want to kind of turn this into a cyclone. I'm not entirely sure. I bought the major pieces, and uh, what I'll probably do in the fall, maybe, is figure out how I'm going to assemble it. For now, this works. So, um, I knew I'd have to fix it in the fall. I wanted to have the pieces. I want to have a plan together. I don't want to, all of a sudden, it's cold, and now I can't have dust collection. So, i got to kind of stay ahead of the curve on it. But, regardless, though, it's on its side right now, because I wanted to see what the bottom looked like to try to brainstorm how I'm going to connect to the bottom. Uh, that is my dust collector, and so far, so good. It... It's only taken me about a month to do what I thought would be a couple day job, but it's now set up and it runs, and I'm very impressed with the suction it gets out of the tools. So we'll leave it at that. Uh, coming around, there's the planer, and my wood stack behind it. I've got my benchmark table here. People often ask me about it. I don't think benchmark is still in existence. I can't get their website up anymore. It is a great table. If you can still get one, I would highly recommend it. If not, I think what Centipede Sawhorses is offering these days is not quite an equivalent, but still pretty nice. And the Centipede thing at least packs up much smaller than this, because this is a little bit less than convenient. Every time I want to work, I put it out in the driveway. And when it's wintertime, I put it in the attic, because I can't do it in the driveway, and I can't keep it in the shop, really, and work. So as, as amazing a table as it is, it doesn't fold up as nicely as I would like. But that's completely counteracted when I set it up in the driveway. It sets up on very uneven pavement, which is what I have outside. My driveway goes down and to the right relative to the, where the garage is. So the fact that it'll fit on uneven pavement is fantastic, and it is absolutely rock solid. Um, if you've ever played with one of the Festool tables, I've always steered away from them because I've never seen one that didn't rock terribly. This thing does not rock in any way, shape, or form, and I realize it's not quite a Festool table, but um, they're, to a large degree, they duplicate what each other do, though this can't do the, the joinery and interact with the, with the fence or the saw or the router the way the, the Festool table does. But as an actual assembly table, I would argue this is much, much better in that it's bigger and, again, just rock solid. You can load it up with anything you want. It doesn't sag. It's a really great table. But enough about the table. That is the shop. Um, and we'll see you next month.